Okay, guys. Hello again. I know it's my makeshift tripod. Oh. Hopefully you guys can see me. I know how like the light hits me, so I can't really see my face a lot of times. Um, <laughs> let's not make it all about me. Oh, I'm gonna probably be trimming all throughout this video just because I like have this trimming thing. Like, uh, yeah, biting my nails, which I need to stop. Um, yeah, this is a braid out. Well, it's actually a two-day braid. I've, I had it braided up from, I did my hair, washed my hair Sunday, you know, condition, everything, like, everything, everything to it. Oh, this baby got some major love, as I had in a while. <laughs> Deep condition into my steamer, and then I braided it into, like, mm, medium size uh, braids, because I like braid outs now, more so than I like twist outs. Like, in the day, I used to like twist outs. So, yeah. And I used the Hair Cholesterol by Queen Helene to deep condition, and I put some uh, Jamaican castor oil on it, the OK brand. Let me get it for y'all. This one. So, yeah. That's the one I had used in my treatment. And I braided it up, you know, left it in. And I haven't been going out because I've been sponsoring yeah um i did actually go out like i took some breaks i had some breaks where i went out you know so we can't do that be all of them i have to take breaks you know once i have my aha moments i'm like okay yes 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 and i do it where um i have to get like five or ten questions right in a row for me to do anything like you know yeah basically um so yeah so Sunday was my day to do my hair. I was studying too, you know, at the same time, same damn time. So I did my hair and I've left it in. It's Wednesday today, so I've left it in the braids for like two, three days, I guess. Um, and last night I unbraided it for no reason, no apparent reason. I was actually planning to go out, but then things didn't work out. But um, yeah, so now I have it out. I put. Instead of braiding it back up last night, um, I just retwisted it, just twisted it. So, yeah. And since I've been cutting my hair, because I just, I don't know, I want the ends to be crisp. Um, and they're not as crisp as I, I, I would prefer them. I sprayed this to make my hair feel thicker. I feel like my hair has been thicker before. And it's probably not so thick for the exact reason that I haven't been really doing much with my hair recently. You know, it became a bum. <laughs> Not a bum, but lazy, like, you know, just want to hide my hair, just not deal with it. So, to really thicken it up, I spray, like, a little bit of water, because it makes the hair swell. Voila. Yeah. I think it might just, with my hair, it just might have to do with the fact that um, I let it grow naturally. So, the, you know, there's, like, that mid-length that's not too short. Your hair's not short, but it's not long. Um, so, you're, like... But you just don't like the shape of your hair. And so you either have to cut into shape, which I didn't do. And so now I'm like getting to the part where I'm putting into the shape that I like. So maybe that's why I'm trending. Like, I just don't like the shape of my hair. You know? That might be it. That might be it. It's like that awkward stage, that awkward length. Everybody knows. Most people know about it. And if you watch enough YouTube videos, you'll hear about it. But there's like an awkward length stage. So either you, some people just cut it short or just wait until it grows out, but I don't think I can wait until it grows out. I think I need to cut it into the shape I want now. Yeah. Okay, let me stop it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I have a lot of stuff to do today, but uh, that's all I do with my hair. So I'm going to end this video. I know you guys are like, Whitney, you, the video didn't just cut off on you mid-sentence. Like, mid it's because, <laughs> yes, guys, I planned my topics today. Yes. Um, and you know, it always has to start somewhere. I think it was um, Russell Simmons or, or Reverend Run who tweeted something, that, but they're like, um, you know, if you don't think you have two minutes to meditate or whatever, then you have like two hours. You know? So uh, you have as much time as you think you have time available. Because usually I used to think, oh, I'm just doing this random, so I don't really have time to plan out what I'm doing. but. I know I take breaks from studying, so, and I know I'm going to do this video, so might as well just take that one extra to do it, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, on to the next video. But today, on this video, uh, I wanted to talk about some music 
that I really love. So, one of them, like, I had loved on my own. Um, but the other one, like, I just, like, I was introduced to it by this dude that sat with my friends. And, like, that's for you, too. Okay, you did it. You know, because I've been hyped up on this, on this album for a minute since the first time I heard it. Um, good job. Uh, and the two artists, separate artists, are Mylon Otis and Tia London. Tia London, I heard about her, like, a while ago, and that was from her first, her first album. I don't know if she has an other album other than that, but when she had, um, Love Junkie, that, and that was the first one I heard about her, and I, I don't know about any of her other stuff, um, before then, prior to that, but that was the first one I heard. So, I was in love, what? And then she got the nerve to drop the second one, Overdose. And let me tell you, mm, that shit is good. And it's, it's the type that I can listen to from beginning to end. Beginning to end. Y'all don't understand. I mean, there is one song. There's just one song that I'm not 100% feeling. But it's not 100%. I don't 100% feel it because, you know, it's bad. It's just, it's not like, uh, I feel like music speaks to who you are in the moment or who you have been, or who you plan to be, and like, the song is, um, I think it's Drunk, yeah, and it goes, Drunk, 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 and, I don't know, I think it goes like that, I haven't listened to it completely, because I'm just not interested to it, um, and I'm not, I'm just not, like, at that phase in my life, like, maybe back in the day, you know, those early college days, I had to see, it would have been more relevant, but it's not to me right now. But everything else on the same day, at least you know, yes, I love it. Um, and yeah, so if y'all haven't checked her out, y'all need to check her out, like, for real, for real. So, that's one. And she's from Chicago. And actually, both of these artists are from Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> My, I'm sorry. I have, like, a, I don't know, like a stuttering thing. I don't know. You. Okay. <laughs> But, um, you know, <laughs> so, yeah, I lost my train of thought there, um, but they're from Chicago, and so I've been listening to a lot of artists from Chicago for some reason, and, um, I don't know if, if you are not, like, aware of, like, the problems, the gun violence that's really, like, rampant in, like, Chicago, then... Yeah, you're living in like a hole, a a very deep, 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 deep hole, and uh, yeah, <laughs> but actually, um, and like the latest news is that this girl, this honors girl who was who was sitting at the inauguration, this um this past inauguration was shot. I think she's 15 years old. And if you guys want to correct me, correct me on Twitter or something like that. But I saw, when I saw, I think it said she was 15 years old. And she was shot. Now, I can't say about what is going on there or what their lifestyle is or, you know, but there's an issue there. And the fact that, and I'm not saying the whole um, Sandy Hooks isn't a tragic or tragedy in, in itself. It is. But it speaks to our mindset if, you know, this, this idea of gun violence has been going around for a, a while. If you think about, think back about it. Before Sandy Hooks, there was like, there's people dying, like kids dying every single second in Chicago. And, and probably um, various other places, but these were in, these are reaching epidemic proportions. Epidemic. I'm saying, and I'm not being sarcastic or, or exaggerating, I'm saying epidemic proportions. And it takes, you know, uh, this weird kid who probably did not have the, who was not, who didn't have the mental capacity to go into this school for people to really take a look at this as, like, an issue. As if that same situation isn't the same thing that's happening in Chicago. That children who, who are put in an environment that is creating, like, these, you know, they're just not mentally capable and should not be, you know, made available to have these guns. They're getting these guns, and, yeah, they're acting violently, just like that kid in the and Sandy Hook. And I don't want people to go into bay and say, act like I'm not being sympathetic. I'm sympathetic to both issues. I'm sympathetic to both. Those victims, they're the victims. 
Everybody else is somebody who can look at the situation and not and and talk about it as something not only exclusive to that one occurrence. It's happening everywhere. Everywhere. It's happening everywhere. And you know, we got our politicians who are discussing gun laws and magazines, magazines, oh, limiting the magazines, like that's going to do shit. Because the problem isn't that the guns are firing each other, you know, the guns are like, I'm going to split you, like, you know, take out the, the bullets and so it's not going to hit. If one person dies who's innocent and who's in a situation where it's gun, it's gun violence, it doesn't, it's not 15 or 1, you know, it's gun violence. You can have 50 occasions where only one bullet kills somebody. Or you could have Sandy Hooks where a guy just goes and blows out everybody all at once. I'm, I'm sorry if my language is harsh, but whew, I feel strongly about it, obviously. And, you know, maybe I'm not, uh, you know, I can't, I'm not saying I know everything. I'm not in the same position as those people. Um, you know, the families, you know, those, they're the people I have sympathy for. But the people advocating for gun laws and who aren't even bringing to the table the real issues, the real issue about it, because... It's not the gun. <clears throat> it's the person holding the guns. And in Chicago, we have a case of kids who who are just the whole their whole system of life. The economy is the we could talk about the economy and its effects, but they had a whole the economy was just something that added to the problems that already existed there. Okay, we have a whole generation of kids who just are incapable of even having that, un that type of understanding. But we can talk about the guy in Sandy Hooks who's in like suburbia, you know, in a quiet little town, and we're like, oh, why did he have these problems? Oh, well, he must have had a mental problem. And th that's the, you know, that's the comparison we make, and we don't make that same comparison to these kids in Chicago. Somewhere along the way, the connections that they should, that those social connections that they should have had, those influences aren't there. And the thing with the, the hey, guys. My other video got cut off, but I was in passion. I was talking about Chicago and the gun violence and whatnot. And I'm like, look, I need to just enter this. I just feel really passionately about it. But that ended up being a run-on sentence in and of itself because I was trying to talk about tea and London and Milo and Otis, and I went to that topic. But I guess it kind of relates because um, the reason why is... Uh, one of the things I tweeted, I tweeted to one of the artists I got, but you guys can check out my Twitter account to see what the question was, but I, I mean, who I referred to, but I was just asking, you know, what, because Reverend Wren was on Global Grind doing like a questionnaire, and one of the questions was about the gun laws in Chicago and all that stuff, and I was like, you know, you know, I want to see more people talk about that stuff, you know, it doesn't take, it, it's, being a person in the limelight, you know, we have all these celebrities, woo woo. You know, I taking the time to comment on something to inspire change because sometimes you just need somebody to inspire change. The w the one little movement that they're doing inspires change. Y'all could go back to the fact that Rosa Parks, all she she was just damn tired, okay? She was just tired. She wasn't trying to make a statement. She wasn't thinking, oh y'all are gonna have a special day for me. No, nothing like that. She was just a regular old person. Got off of work and she was tired. She was like, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. She already, she knew what she deserved as a person. But at the same time, maybe any other day, if she had enough, she was just like, okay, I ain't gonna bug. I'm just gonna move. But at the time, she was just tired. She, was, she just spoke her mind in that moment. And sometimes I feel like artists need to do a little of that. And sometimes when they do do that, we ostracize them. Like Kanye, like his statement, you know, after the whole Katrina thing. We ostracize them as in as if they're saying something ignorant. But the thing is that there's an underlying issue, and some people don't even have the voice to express it. And sometimes somebody else takes that voice to express it, even if the, the complete information is not there. And and that's not to say I, I disagreed. Plenty of us agreed with Kanye. We were just laughing at the fact that people were replaying over and over and over. You know, and now we've kind of made Kanye into like this radical person that I don't really, I think he plays up to, but you know, it, it's not, it's not a big deal to be wrong, but it's a big deal when you're afraid to stop, talk even though you know you're right. Like, you know, if you get, and that's understandable, whatever, you know, um, I guess it has to do with freedom of speech.
Like, that's why I don't care about ignorant people saying ignorant stuff because at the end of the day, I feel like if, as long as you have the opportunity, as long as you are open to listening, then that makes you much that much better of a person. How that run, run on sentence went on, I don't, I have no idea. But yeah, some like Tia London, Milo Notice, I loved everything off of Tia London. I can't even pick one that's my favorite because I like, I like playing them all. But um, I wanted to actually play, oh, this is my song, Be You. I don't know if y'all can hear it. Like this is one of I just love everything but we can feel so oh, wow. I'll go to cool cause conversation and we can get away small time but we can damn sure so get wasted see these people know we don't know why we don't know why but shut down and conversation we can get to know each other well so no we well. don't feel like no relationships, so no complications. I'm complicated. Try to stay so far from basic. But basically, I'm a basic kid. Don't call me crazy. Either accept me or let me move on. He went in. I want you in my mind. I don't need nobody else. Okay, I'm fine. It's just a few. But what the hell? Shit, I'm young. Girls just wanna have fun. You already know. You only live once. Live with no regrets. Show you some respect. And you ain't gotta say you so. You get a check. And I don't want to be nobody for myself So I inspire you to be yourself I don't want to, I don't want to Make you feel uncomfortable So you can judge, you can judge The fact that I can be yourself, baby And if you want to, if you want to Chill, baby, we can get comfortable now You can judge, you can judge The fact that I can be yourself, be you, be you Ba 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 be you, be you, <laughs> be you, be you. Ba 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 be you, be you. Yeah. Um. You can take your cool off, leave it at the door at me. Take your shoes off, sleep it on the bed. Take the shoes off, show you true colors. Your shoes off, and I was one, I probably need true blue. The stars align at night, and it's time for me and you. You, when I made you, you knew what to do. You look so good, shitty should've made too. See, this is nothing like. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> Woo! And then the other one. Yo ma, yo ma, I really love your mind, I say your heart, your heart, I really love your heart, I say your soul, your smile. Lyrics, you guys know. I am so attracted to you, physically and mentally, yeah. Got you down to the science. We have so much chemistry, yeah. Baby, you inspire me, yeah. You take me to me, yeah. You're there when I'm in dire need. I love you entirely. Just with the way you make me feel in the night. And I'm in love with the text that you sent me in the morning. And I can imagine what it would be like. I love it. I'm sorry. I love it. So, um, y'all might be saying, I'm in my feelings. Whatever. Yes, I'm in my feelings with this song. And if you could get me in my feelings in music, then you just hit another, co like, ugh, resonation. Like, I, it resonates with me, obviously. So, yes. So, yes, I ma'am. Um, and then there's uh, Milo and Otis. Uh, their album is The Joy. You can find it online. Tia Linda, she's on like SoundCloud, so you can download that free. And then you can listen to The Joy, Milo and Otis. But they also, their CD, if you want to buy it, it's $12. And it ships out in three days. 
so you can play it and listen to it online too. And it's at Hello Milo and Otis. That bootcamp that town slash album slash or whatever. You you can Google it. Yeah. Um, let's see, which was my favorite one? I like Can't Stop Now. I really do. Um, but I like everything. But I'll just say for right now my favorite is Can't Stop Now. Just for y'all trying to figure out what shit to do. Who says everybody gotta know what they're meant to do in this world? All I know is what I got in my head. I guess I might as well start there. When I grow up, I'm gonna power walk across the universe. I'll be a rock star veterinary. Yeah, I'm gonna be the first one in the world. Yeah, I'm gonna be the first one. Can't stop now. No, I can't stop now. No matter what they say to me. I cannot stop. I got so many dreams stuck up in my mind. <laughs> my rhymes are crazy. My mama hangs my writings on the wall. But you, you see, you already see the vibe I'm on with this you know, Otis, like, it's, it's a little bit different from um, Tia London, but I'm loving it. Like, oh, it was just like, I think it was like Sarah Godfrey for, um, it was like the Washington Post, she wrote an article, she wrote off <laughs> my speech impediment, obviously, but she wrote an article about them, and I think she wrote it December 17th, this past year, 2012, yeah, um, and that's around the time I heard about them, too, and yeah, she's, she couldn't, 